there, it's Karen again. Last time we talked a little bit about the, how the Hampstead hoax began to get off the ground after Ella and Abraham came back from Morocco and contacted various people that they knew, um, including people like Brian Garish. They tried to get hold of Bill Maloney, but for whatever reason, he wasn't biting. Um, and various other people. Then the um, children were removed from their care and the trials began. Now, to be clear, when we say trials, we don't mean criminal trials. We mean trials in the family court because Ella was fighting to have her children given back to her. Um, her partner, the children's father, was on the other side and trying to have the children taken into his care. Um, and this went on for most of the fall of, um, of 2015, um, culminating in December, at which point Ella sacked, rehired, sacked, rehired, and then sacked again her um, legal team, and they handed over her court bundle, which contained a bunch of things that Ella should not have had access to, such as um, the police interview videos. Now, I'm not saying that Ella shouldn't have seen the police interview videos, those were certainly her right to see, but the usual process would be that they would be viewed um, in the presence of her solicitor and then given back to the, the police or the solicitor for safekeeping. As it was, now Ella had these things and she could make what she would of them. Um, she handed over the entire bundle to Sabine. Now, she had hired Sabine on the 14th of November, as we mentioned last time, um, and there was some confusion because Sabine claims that she was hired as a Mackenzie friend, and yet she didn't do anything in court. The only person who um, did do anything in court after the, um, the final uh, sacking of the solicitors and then the, the hearings continuing was Belinda Mackenzie, who intervened on Ella's behalf. What Sabine did was publicity. That was what she was good at, it was what she wanted to do, and it's how she carried this thing out. Now that she had the videos in her hands, Sabine knew exactly what to do. She emailed a friend of hers named Brad um, in an email found on her computer. Um, we found this out during her trial in 2018. The email was titled, How Many Hours of Footage? And in it, she asked Brad um, how she could um, arrange the videos in a way that they could be shared more easily and also perhaps produce a trailer for them. She also said, and I'm just going to read here, um, Russian TV will come on the 11th of January, she wrote. I may persuade Ella to pay for it. So she was already thinking big. She wasn't thinking just, oh, well, share this with a few people. Maybe a few people will be interested in it. She was going to go big. Um, and this was her plan from the very beginning, despite what anything she might say later about how she never intended to share anything, um, all of those excuses. Clearly, from the beginning, she planned to share the video. Now, also in the email that she sent to Brad, um, Sabine mentioned having um, secured the services, I suppose, of a police officer. Now, she doesn't name the police officer, but she does say that she thinks that um, having an interview with him and having him interview Ella will help to make Ella's claims more believable. Um, and it seems extremely likely that she's talking here about Ray Savage, um, who is a police officer who lives, former police officer, I should say, who lives in the Sussex countryside on a farm. Um, as far as we're aware, he basically seems to spend most of his time hosting um, uh, Freeman on the land types of things. Um, and I believe he is also involved in selling the um, Miracle Mineral Solution um, Drink Bleach and Cure Autism uh, hokum medicine that uh, so many people seem to be falling for. So on the 22nd of December 2014, um, Ella lost confidence uh, in Judge Mayer, who had been the previous judge in family court who'd been looking after her case, and she decided to launch a judicial review, which she did with Belinda's help. Um, the next day, Judge Mayer transferred the case over to Mrs. Justice Anna Poffley of the High Court, 
and that's when things got really interesting court-wise. We won't get into that right at the moment. And then on the 26th of December, Sabine wrote this on one of her many, many blogs. Um, Regarding my social life with meaning, I can only hope that this case will become the breakthrough that we've been working towards. It took me quite a while to get my head, heart, and strategic thinking in line with the necessities to respond to calls for court proceedings in the case of a Russian mum whose two children were taken by Barnett Police on the 11th of September 2015. Well, she said 2015, she meant 2014. A few days afterwards, um, Mary Rooney, who has usually attended um, all of the trials having to do with either Sabine or or, uh, Nilu, um, and who has been a longtime friend of both Sabine and Belinda, uh, was witnessed handing out leaflets in front of Southwark Crown Court. Now, the leaflets, I believe, said something like, return the whistleblower kids to their Russian mother. And this, to our knowledge, was the first mention of whistleblower kids. Um, Apparently that was a phrase which Sabine made up and thought was quite clever and she used it frequently. Now at about the same time um, the trial was continuing, the the hearings in in court, Um, Sabine began to contact Barnett Council. Now they were of course involved because they would have been the people who had been dealing with um, foster care for the children and follow follow up social work care to, to ensure that they were safe and, and you know well cared for and so forth. Um, at this point Sabine began sending them videos uh, from the file of videos that uh, Ella had given her and saying that these were the most quote most convincing evidence um, that the children had actually been sexually abused by hundreds of Satanists in a school and church um, that they both attended. On the 26th of January 2015, uh, Sabine wrote for Ella something called a, that she called a position statement, which Ella read in court, um, and this was also sent to various individuals. I'll just read to you from that. Um, The statement contained a thinly veiled threat as to what would happen if the children, quote, were not returned to their mother and grandparents with immediate effect. Um, The consequence, according to this statement, would be high-level embarrassment. Uh, And that is Sabine's wording, not mine. Um, Sabine also wrote an email to Theresa May, who at that time was Home Secretary. Um, And in that letter, she explicitly stated that the position statement was our effort not to expose this scandal in exchange for returning the children. In other words, Sabine was saying that if they returned the two children to Ella, she would drop the whole thing and forget all about it. Now, given that Sabine claimed to believe that hundreds of children and possibly thousands of babies, if Abraham's math was correct. If you remember, he said something, he said that about 800 babies, it was actually more like 8,000 babies, would have been, would have had to have been killed in order to make the um, baby skull um, decorations that people allegedly wore during their, during their dances. So Sabine was willing to forget all about the murders of all of these babies and children, the rapes of all these children, Um, in exchange for Ella receiving her two children back. That seems like a very, very strange trade to me. Now, if Sabine really believed that those children were all being raped and murdered, is there really any possible way that she could have offered such an exchange? I honestly don't think there is, and I don't think that Sabine really believed that there was a cult in Hampstead that was killing babies, I think that she wanted to use the information and the videos to blackmail a judge into returning two children to their mother who had been allowing them to be abused by her boyfriend. And that's, that is really what this whole thing was all about. It was not about a cult in Hampstead or anywhere else. It was about Sabine getting her own way. Now, regarding the email that was sent to Theresa May, 
Um, Sabine would later claim that she had accidentally BCC'd a, another blogger, Henry Curtis of the Tap blog, um, and that she had said, uh, sent him the videos or the link to the videos by accident. Interestingly enough, when the police went through Sabine's computer, they discovered that no, there was no BCC field on that email. Instead, um, Sabine started a change.org petition um, entitled, let me just read this here, uh, the Right Honourable Chris Grayling MP returned the whistleblower kids and abuse survivors of a London school to their Russian family. Now this petition contained a link and the link led to Sabine's Google Drive. So anyone who signed that petition would receive also the link to Sabine's Google Drive, which contained all of the videos. You can imagine how quickly something like that would spread. The 2nd of February also was the day when Ella would have her last contact with the children. Um, this would happen in the contact center, which is normal for parents whose children have been taken into care. Um, and she brought along pens and paper and asked the children in Russian to write letters to the judge saying that they wanted to come home to her. Um, this is, of course, completely not acceptable in, um, in, in that kind of a situation. And the children, as it happens, uh, both dis said that they didn't want to write these letters, uh, at which point Ella began swearing at them in Russian and told them that if they didn't comply with her wishes, she would do something to their dog. She didn't specify what, um, but this was basically the, uh, the foster carers heard about this afterwards and, and were shocked, as you can imagine. Um, now, on, also on the 2nd, um, that would be the day that Henry Curtis, um, who was the person um, who Sabine uh, didn't P BCC, but she did actually um, put a note in an email to him saying that if, she, if he were to share these videos, they would certainly go viral. Sure enough, Henry Curtis shared the videos and they went viral. Um, I'm just going to read to you a little bit here. Um, an article was published on Henry Curtis's TAP blog titled Children Describe Satanic Murders They Were Forced to Take Part In, which contained an email to then Home Secretary Theresa May, along with a list of and links to the original videos. As Sabine had predicted in her email to Curtis, the videos quickly went viral with more than 4 million people having viewed them by the 10th of March. So that's a considerable number of people watching videos of small children describing unspeakably horrible sexual practices um, and prompted visibly on screen at times. Like and at times you can see Abraham's hand coming out and shoving their heads into position or you can hear him in the background telling them what to say or you can hear Ella telling them what to say. Um, so those videos went public they were shared with the public and they became an internet sensation for a little while. Sure enough, by the 3rd of February, um, a discussion thread began on the David Icke Forum. And as many people will remember, that discussion thread ran to well over a thousand pages. And as far as I'm aware, it may still be carrying on. On the 4th of February, the parents at the school involved received um, E an email from the school stating that unpleasant rumors about the school were circulating. They didn't receive any other information than that, but by the next day they began to find that their names were being published on the internet along with the names of their children um, and their nannies and their phone numbers and their addresses and their emails. Um, and all of that was publicly available and that's when they began to get all of the abuse and um, emails and horrible phone calls um, that would begin at that time and really went on for a very, very long time, caused a great deal of damage in that community, as you can imagine. Things were really picking up ahead of steam at this point. On the 9th of February, Ella read aloud her position statement online 
and at that point um, people will probably remember this because she was wearing a, um, a blue track jacket and looked really dead from the arse up I'm just gonna say um, and she claimed, made the claim that a Satanist cult was operating at the school and that you know children were being raped and murdered and and so forth the usual story um, and she was she also in that video read aloud just in case anyone had missed it the names addresses phone numbers and so forth of all the all the parents she also talked about certain children in the school who quote enjoyed sex um, and this again led to sometimes those children having their parents be approached by actual pedophiles who were interested in having sex with their children one mother described this happening and said that when she received that phone call she ran she had to vomit she actually had to run out of the room and vomit now by this time the court had figured out of course what was going on because they had realized that Ella had Ella and Sabine together had released the videos and had um, been making the whole situation extremely public um, and at that point the uh, court had issued a mandatory injunction against both Sabine and Ella and they had attempted to deliver it but Ella didn't turn up in court on the 10th of February. On the 12th of February the police turned up at Ella's house um, and attempted to first of all to speak to her there's a video that they that Ella and her um, and her parents I believe made of this in which the police can be heard outside the house and Ella's lawyer for some reason who seems to be there with them is attempting to negotiate with them through the letterbox um, meanwhile Ella and Abraham um, basically bolted in her judgment uh, Mrs. Poffley said the following on the 12th of February police officers attended at Mrs. Draper's address her car was in the driveway a gentleman spoke with the police through the letterbox this would have been her lawyer um, and indicated that he was the mother's lawyer the police explained that they were there to discuss possible offenses committed under uh, 5.4 of the Harassment Act 1997 um, they were denied entry to the property whilst the police were waiting for the means to secure a forced entry three people climbed out of a first floor window ran along the roof line of three or four houses and climbed down onto some nearby garages where they disappeared from sight now it's not totally clear who the third person was that escaped with them um, we don't know that but the it could have been the lawyer maybe he kind of just kept the cops talking long enough to, for, for Ella and Abe to throw some things into a bag and then they took off together there may have else may have been someone else in the house with them but in any case by the time the police got into the house um, only Ella's parents were there and they were not very helpful in helping the police to locate their daughter at the same time Sabine legged it out of the country as well she took off for Germany and would be staying I believe with her nephew outside Berlin um, and remained there until mid-August however of course this didn't stop her from being constantly online and constantly feeding information to people about the about the hoax and making all sorts of claims and basically pumping this thing up as, as hard and fast as she could now one of the main vehicles that Sabine used online aside from her various blogs was change.org she would publish updates to her petition because um, the petitions served a couple of purposes one is that whenever anyone signed the petition um, that meant that Sabine and Belinda could harvest their names emails and so forth and therefore have them on email lists for future reference the other thing was that if you belonged to a change.org um, petition if you had signed signed your name to it um, that meant that you would receive any updates automatically that Sabine would send so unlike a blog where you subscribe and then you can you know most of the time most people just come back um, and have a look you know daily or weekly or however often the blog tends to publish um, if you've signed a change.org petition you're going to receive emails in your inbox 
updating you as to exactly what's going on, and this is what Sabine was doing. On the 24th of February, Sabine introduced a video on her change.org petition, so th this would have been sent out to all of her subscribers, um, and she called it a remarkable video, and it was the first known video put out about the Hampstead hoax by a blogger who would be known as Jackie Farmer. Her real name, we would later find out, was Charlotte Ward. Um, but for the time being, she called herself Jackie Farmer. We mentioned Jackie Farmer in our previous video about the, the planning of the hoax. Um, she was the one who rewrote her biography and published it online on the 14th of November, 2014. Um, when she showed up in um, fe late February, early March of 2015, it was with a blog that would be called Hampstead Research. Um, sound, sounds a familiar name because in fact that was what our blog was kind of a, a parody of hers when, when we first started. Um, her, we kind of joke about her blogging, but it was brutal. She was, did some very, very nasty things. Um, like going into people's Facebook pages and taking perfectly innocent pictures, for example, of, you know, I don't know, teachers maybe having a drink on a Friday night, as people will sometimes do when they work in the same place, um, and somehow implying that this meant that they were, um, that they were involved in something nefarious, um, or people taking their children by the hand for a walk. Um, and somehow this meant that they were leading them to be abused. Um, but these were innocent people and their children, and she had no hesitation whatsoever in publishing their pictures on her blog um, and naming their names and talking about their businesses, their families, their everything there was to know about them. She would expose it on her blog. One of the things that was interesting about Jackie Farmer's blog was that she claimed in the um, you know in in the intros to her videos and so forth to have nothing to do with the association of Mackenzie friends and but just said she supported their aims this was a blatant lie she had lived in in Belinda Mackenzie's house for a couple of years in around around 2012 in fact one of the few pictures that's available of her um, is when she went to help out at the Musa family case, which I believe we've mentioned before, um, and had her picture snapped as part of a group of the people who were doing that. So she is a woman who has no hesitation about not just lying, but also about being incredibly cruel to families who had done nothing to deserve it and were the innocent victims of a very, very nasty hoax. So the last part we're going to mention is just that Sabine started the domain uh, Whistleblower Kids, uh, which became the title of her main blog about the Hampstead hoax um, on the 15th of March, 2015. Uh, she says that she began writing on the blog earlier than that, but that that was the time when she registered the domain. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would work because it has always seemed to me that you have to have the domain before you can write on it, but however that worked, that's what she said and that's what was happening. So basically by the time um, the, the fact-finding hearing, Mrs. Mrs. Justice Poffley's fact-finding hearing was underway, um, there were already two blogs publishing exclusively about the Hampstead hoax and people were beginning to really you know, absorb it as especially those who were interested in conspiracies in the first place, um, many of them absorbed this information and took it as gospel, and many of them still do. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, and next time, I think we will talk a little bit more about Jackie Farmer and how we found out who she was.